Among the state police proposal, former Inspector General of Police, Sunday Hidero, joins us now on Newsday. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Welcome to Newsday. Thank you very much. Now, President Tinumbu and the 36 state governors met yesterday, and it seems, you know, they are considering setting out a framework for the adoption of state police. How desirable is this to you? Uh, uh, in my opinion, it is not desirable. Uh, I think in an effort to search for the solution to our crime problem in the country, we're trying to look at state police. But state police is not the answer to uh, the crime in the society. State police, is, it is said that, um, well, because it's a local affairs, therefore you need a local police. But crimes, is not, crimes are not local these days. They are national, transnational, and so on. I mean, take uh, international trafficking drugs and uh, persons, take out terrorism, uh, take uh, and transport that crime. They are not local. They are not local. And I don't think uh, state police is the answer to our problems. And, uh, well, with the way the current police uh, situation has been set up, um, is it uh, with, the, with the onboarding of some sort of state police, would it signal that um, the current police has failed in their constitutional responsibilities and actions? No, I don't think the current police has failed. I would rather say that they have not been allowed adequately to perform their duties. The Constitution is clear as to the duties of all security agencies, including the police. Internal security is for the police. And maintaining, maintaining external aggression, containing external aggression, and the uh, act of terrorism are those of the military. You will find that there, there, there has been too much incursion into internal affairs of the police, that uh, we, we do not know exactly what are the boundaries. Take for instance, when I was a young officer, there used to be modalities for calling the military into activities uh, or insurrection and so on in the, within the country. Of course, the police will tackle the matter. And the, if police is not in a position, or if the, 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 the problems uh, are more than the police can take, they will call in the military. And the military will just come solve the problem and leave. But these days, um, you, you see the military everywhere. Go to Mago, they say the military are sent there again. But quite frankly, quite frankly, these problems could be solved by the police if adequately equipped. Take for instance, I, I was a commissioner of police in Plateau State. And uh, as DIG, I went there, there was a problem between uh, Langtan and Wase. And when I saw the killing as uh, the inspector general of police, I came back, wrote to the president that we need a mobile police force in Kagarku. It was said, and ever since you had no problem uh, in that area, go to Umuleri, Aguleri, the same problem happened. 
But with the setting of a mobile unit there, it solved the problem. Why not a mobile unit being sent to Mangu? Or be, be placed there, contain this internal security? I think the, uh, we are overwhelming the military in, in internal security. And I think too much military visibility is it, not good in a, in, a, in a democracy. We should limit their function and uh, provide the police where with her to be able to contain this crime. Now, earlier you said that um, state police is not desirable, but a lot of analysts believe that even the police force is understaffed, they are poorly trained. Most times what they do is uh, abuse the trust of the public. So I'm wondering, you know, if, 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 if it's... Uh, how, 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 uh, I wonder if a lot of Nigerians, you know, would agree with you that the Nigerian police, you know, can actually tackle this conflict, this crisis that we are facing in the country. Of course, you remember, you know, that the special anti-robbery squad that SARS, you know, was set up to deal with a particular part, you know, the issue of robbery and other crimes in the country. And of course, you saw how that turned out, you know, at the end of the day, the public rose up, there was an outcry, and then they had to, you know, banish it. So how do we deal with all these issues while we are also trying to empower the police, you know, to, to tackle crime and criminality in Nigeria? Well, in the first place, there is the, the training should be intensified. And uh, recruitment should not be ad hoc. You don't recruit policemen uh, 40,000 when the election is about to take place. It should be a regular feature. You regret it because a lot of them will, will lose a lot through uh, death, through dismissal, through retirement, and so on. So when you recruit, you are just replacing those. You are not adding more to the police. So there is a need to recruit the police on a regular basis and also to equip them. You see, go, go and see. When I was a, when I was a, a squadron commander in 1983 of the mobile police force, 1983, I had a Land Rover. I have a station wagon. I had a motorcycle. I have the Range Rover, Range Rover for me alone. And all my un units had one uh, uh, Land Rover and one lorry each. But these days, it is hard to find a mobile squadron being properly equipped. Of course, I, I, I must tell you, if you go back to the First Republic during Shagari's period, of course we were well equipped. And that was when we have this mobile uh, barracks and so on that we are still using today. So I, I, I think it is a matter of training. Uh, it's a matter of more recruitment because the, the police force are not sufficient to contain the crime of this country. Yes, they are not sufficient. But we can make them uh, sufficient private by recruiting and providing the well with that. Training, equipment, and technology are often the things that are talked about in order to win a war. I'm not saying that we are in one. It seems like a low-grade situation. We are finding, uh, fighting with the bandits and the kidnappers who are more brazen than ever. You hear of uh, the Ukrainian president calling for uh, pretty much everyone in the world to help to uh, gather more equipment uh, to fight off uh, the Russians in his country. And you talked about how equipment will help us. But we know that the issue is the looting of the funds that are meant for that equipment or the training or the technology. Uh, how can that be overcome? Uh, when will we realize that it is more important to have uh, the military and the police 
uh, equipped with the, the proper technology and ammunition than they have, rather than having that money sit in the banks or in the pockets of the few and the rich? Well, uh, the government in its wisdom set off the police trust fund not within the management of the police but with the management of the civilians and all we had to do is to list the equipment we had need and those will be purchased i am not sure i'm not sure we have benefited benefited so much from that police trust fund but ultimately, the police is not asking that the money should be given to them, but give them the equipment. Give them the equipment. Make sure they are the right specification. Um, and the, the police will really function uh, properly. You see, uh, I, I had our... Uh, Honorable Elder Statement of the First Republic, uh, Honorable Dan Tata, saying, for instance, that uh, we should go back uh, to the parliamentary system and also have state police. Yes, I, I, I saw with him, but I, I, I want to observe that today, Britain from which we derive our policing system is not embracing local police. It's going towards the national police. And I, I'll give you an example. In the 40s, there were about 180 police forces in Britain. In 1962, there were about 150. Today, there are only 43 police forces in Britain. And the process is continuing to ensure that they have a national police force. Why are we going local when crime is becoming international? Now, so in the event, you know, that the federal government and, of course, the governors and the National Assembly decide, you know, to implement um, and adopt state police, what do you think will change in terms of fighting crime? Well, I'm not sure much will change, uh, but I, I want to tell you what will change is just that um, there will be no national uh, police force. There will be locally controlled police force. And the IG will not be in a position to give instruction to the commissioner of police in the state. And the governor of that state will be in charge of the security of the state without interference either from, by the minister or, or the president. So, your, good, your guess is as good as mine what will happen. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm also optimistic that um, had the police been well nurtured and made to be in a position to control crime in the society, they would do better than what they are doing now. And, you know, many people have expressed their fears, particularly uh, about a, this control situation, that if uh, state police does get created and the state governors are in control of them, that uh, the, their human nature might be to naturally hijack these new arrangements in order to leverage the power of this uh, state police for their own political and selfish gains. Yeah, we, we, we've had it in the past, during the period of native authority police and local government police. We saw it all, 
how <coughs> the governors use the state police or local government police to intimidate their opponents and um, how they use it even to, to prosecute uh, uh, their opponents. Uh, well, the fear is still there because uh, even more now because the, the, there is uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, intolerance, political intolerance now. There is a lot of um, uh, mistrust and distrust between political parties and so on. So. If you give the power to the governor, are you sure he's not going to misuse it? And take, for instance, the local government election in the different states. See what happens. See what happens, even at the moment. Is it, um, is it wise to entrust such powers on the governors? But is it possible, you know, to put some checks in place to make state police work just like it does, you know, in other climes, for instance, the U.S.? Sorry, I'm not, I'm not hearing you. I ask that, is it possible for us to put yes. some, for, you know, for the federal government, the National Assembly, you know, to put some checks in place to make state police work here in Nigeria just the way it works in other climes? Well, I'm sure they will, uh, the federal government will not establish the state police without putting checks and balances. Um, you can put the check and balances, but um, the implement implementation is, is uh, one of the problems. Uh, because uh, the operatives are going to be the same Nigerians as we are. And uh, just as uh, criminals would uh, think ahead before even the, 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 the checks and balances are made, of course, there will be ways by, to we, by which they circumvent some of these rules and checks. Well, we will surely see how this plays out and hope that our country becomes more safe as a result of it. Uh, Sunday Hindero, the former Inspector General of Police, thank you so much for joining us here on Newsday. Mm -hmm.